Good morning students. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to Engineering Drawing 101. And as you can see in front of me, I have all the drawing equipment and also the textbook that you need for this course. Um, there is a bit of flexibility when it comes to buying the equipment, but let me give you some advice on what's important and what isn't. So first of all, let's start with the textbook. The textbook is called the Engineering Drawing Guide by Sydney B. Jolson. And this is a book that is locally produced, so it is not very expensive. Um, if you're not able to get your hands on a hard copy at the moment, <clears throat> you can go to the website, which is engineeringdrawing.co.za, and you can purchase a PDF version of this book and download it. So that's a very useful option. Um, especially when we're doing online courses. So everything we do in this course, um, except for the CAD section that we will do later, um, everything is covered in this textbook. So it has instructions, it has examples, um, it, it shows you exactly how to do various drawings, uh, whether it's orthographic projection, asymmetric um, sectional views, um, construction methods as you can see we've got a few construction methods here but i'll be going through all of these methods with you during the course um, it also has a lot of information on the standard ways of drawing certain things like screw threads um, springs um, gears etc but we'll get to that later on in the course um, so we're going to start right at the back at the beginning with lettering um, with different line styles and scales, etc. Okay, but before we do that, let's carry on looking at all the equipment. <clears throat> so, what we have at the bottom here is the drawing board, um, and this is designed to take an A3 paper, and that clips in um, underneath over here, and on this corner over there. Um, what it has is a ruler that slides into grooves and allows you which which keeps it horizontal <clears throat> so you can see it's in line with those uh, those blocks we move it to any position and that's a very useful feature because then we can move it to a position we can lock it on both sides and then we can use our other drawing tools to draw vertical and horizontal lines so a drawing board like this is very useful. <clears throat> if you're not able to get hold of one um, because of uh, lockdown or COVID, um, then it is possible to get by just with rulers and with set squares. <clears throat> so the next item that's very important is a set of set squares. Um, as you can see here, we have a, a 30 and a 60 degree set square. 30 degrees degree and that's the 90 degree and he has a 45 degree set square and the way we use this <coughs> is on our horizontal ruler once we've locked it into position so we can draw accurately we take our set square and we put it on the ruler and we slide it back and forth or so even that way and we take our pencil and we can draw lines vertically or 45 degree lines or we can draw 30 degree lines or 60 degree lines like that. All right, so set squares are really useful and really important. We can also measure with the, um, the centimeter markings on the side. Although in engineering, we work with millimeters. I know in school that they, they spend a lot of time uh, teaching you to work in centimeters, but we work in millimeters in engineering because we are a very accurate profession. All right, the next thing that's important is the pencil. Um, <clears throat> so as you know, you do get normal pencils, which uh, you have to sharpen. Problem with these pencils is that they don't provide a consistent point. And as you can see, this one is relatively blunt already. That's gonna be quite a thick line that we draw. Um, so we prefer to use what we call clutch pencils. And this is a rot ring, so there's a variety. Um, and in the the guidelines, are the, the instructions are that you get a 0.5 millimeter thick lead and a 0.35. Personally, I feel a 0.35 is a little bit too thin. 
So um, for this, for, for my exercises, I'm using a 0.5 and a 0.7. <clears throat> um, but you can get away with just a 0.5 um, if you're very careful and you draw very lightly for your construction lines and then you press much harder um, to go over again for your, your, your main outlines. Okay, so normally you press the end and the pencil lead comes out. Um, you also, obviously, you need to you have replacement leads, the right size for your pencil. So any um, CNA or Waltons or, or any bookshop should keep these kinds of pencils. All right, so that provides you a consistent thickness of line for your engineering drawing. All right, so those are our pencils. Let's put them on the side. We spoke about that. Here we have <coughs> a protractor. The protractor is designed to measure angles and to, to allow you to draw angles at, at any, any particular angle that you would like. Um, so you've got a center point there that you put on the, the vertex of your angle. Um, you line it up with the horizontal. Um, and then from there you measure off um, either on the inside um, or on the outside if you're measuring from the other side. And you can measure off your degrees and then you, you draw in, join the dots and you can get a measurement of, a, of any angle. So there's 40 degrees, for example or 30 degrees or 20 degrees. <clears throat> um, I also find it useful, um, the protractor that I use uh, is this one, um, and this one has a ruler on that side. Um, so that's very useful when you're drawing a perpendicular line. So you can line up the center with a line on this side and that side, and then you can draw a perpendicular line that way. You can probably do it with this one too although it doesn't have a ruler edge to it, but either one will do. So that's a protractor, very important. Then we have a scale ruler. <clears throat> and this, as you can see, has um, three edges to it, but it's got uh, six scales. All right, so we start uh, with the first scale here, one to one. There we can see, that means that one millimeter on the scale is equal to one millimeter in real life. If we go over to the one to two scale over here, <clears throat> one millimeter here is um, so 20 millimeters uh, is actually 10 millimeters. So it's showing you, uh, you would actually draw at half the size with this scale of your ruler because it's one to two. So you can think of it as one divided by two which is a half. So that's how scales work. So the second number, if that is smaller than your scale, your drawing will be smaller than real size. Um, if we go to 1 to 20, that's 20 times smaller than real life is 1 to 10. We've got 1 to 5, and 2 to 1 is double the size of real life. The reason we need that is because we often draw things that are much bigger than the size of our page um, in real life. Uh, so if I'm drawing um, a full-size drawing of this protractor, I can put it onto my page, on my A3 page, even an A4 page, um, and that wouldn't be a problem. But if I'm drawing a car, for example, that, that is a very large thing, so <clears throat> that we'd have to draw it much smaller to fit onto a page. So that is where we start using scales. All right, so that is a scale ruler. So that is quite important. You can get away with not using one, but then every time you measure something, you have to remember to calculate the size. So either double or half your dimensions. All right, um, then we've got a, an eraser because we will make mistakes. So it's important to get a good quality eraser. Um, the other thing I don't have here is a erasing shield which is a very thin, small piece of uh, um, metal with, with various holes in it. And you put that over your mistake with only that little part sticking out through the hole that you want, want to erase. And then you use your eraser to go and erase in that hole. So that stops you from smudging over your, your whole drawing. So that's quite useful. I just don't have one with me. Then we have a compass. 
Um, so this is this is a very important tool to have to draw your circles. Um, and this is a good quality compass. Um, it can also bend on the legs, but you can see it's got it's very stable and it's got a very fine adjustment in the center. It's got this top section which is knurled. It's got the pattern on it um, so that you can twist it as you're drawing your circle. You can put it down and then you twist it to draw your circle like that. So it's holding a piece of lead which you have to sandpaper to get to a nice sharp edge. Um, now when you're at school you probably bought one of these cheap mathematical sets um, and I don't have much left in here because my children have used them all up and lost them. Um, but you can see the quality of the equipment you get in these sets is really not very good. Uh, this is never going to do justice to an engineering drawing. It's just too flimsy and not accurate enough. So you can throw all of those mathematical sets away. Maybe keep the, the set squares. They, they may be useful. But definitely the compass that holds a normal pencil like this, that's not going to be good enough for engineering drawing. All right, so a compass, that's very important. Then we have some masking tape. Um, depending on how you're drawing and what you're drawing on, you may need to stick your paper down, hold it down with masking tape. These drawing boards have clips on the sides and the bottom to hold your paper in place. Um, <clears throat> right, other optional items that you could purchase. Um, this is called a French, uh, no, this is a flexi curve. Um, so it's, it's a little bit damaged because it's been with me, with me for many many years um, but you can create a curve and draw around the edge of it a French curve um, has a variety of shapes to it so this, this is a radius so this is a constant radius French curve has a, a changing radius so it's got a shape on it but it's like different s shapes and that allows you to draw um, curves that are either increasing or decreasing in the radius Create interesting shapes but we don't really use that in engineering um, here I have a stencil for writing letters um, but we don't need this at the stage either because I'm going to be teaching you to write neatly by hand all right so that is all the equipment that you're going to need and the textbook for this course so please make sure you, you get those as soon as possible so that we can start with the drawing exercises.